Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Let's give the band a great big hand, everybody. We appreciate you guys. Thank you very much. Man, the anointing was flowing on you, Mr. Mr. Guitar Player. Glory to God. That was awesome today. That was awesome. Praise the Lord. How many of you are glad to be in church this morning? Hallelujah. How many of you are glad you are the church this morning? Glory. Well, you know what the church is supposed to do? It's supposed to thank him and praise the Lord. Let's do that a little bit more this morning. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we praise you. Lord, we give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. Thank you for what you have planned for this day for us. We receive it with thanksgiving. And together, we declare, Lord, and I want you to repeat this after me. Say, Lord, you are good. And your mercy endures forever. We'll do it two more times. Lord, you are good and your mercy endures forever. One more time. Lord, you are good and your mercy endures forever. Let's shout about it. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You see, that's who God is. He's good. And his mercy endures forever. Don't ever forget that God is good to you. That he loves you. And that he has a plan for your life. He has a purpose for your life. He has a pursuit for your life. And he wants you to live out your days in his presence and in his fullness. You know, the Bible says that with long life does he satisfy us and show us his salvation. God has a long life plan for everyone in this room. Did you hear that? God has a long life. Now, I don't know what long means to you, but it means long to me. It means that we could go to 120 years if we so desired. Or maybe even longer. Did you know that you actually are the one that helps determine the length of your life? We can't do it without God. We can't live long without him. But he actually needs you and I to participate with him cooperate with him, walk with him, flow with him. And if you and I are going to live a long life, then you and I are going to have to learn how to live by faith. Amen. Today I wanna to minister to you on the subject that I started last week called um, Faith 101. That was the title I gave it. But I wanna break that down even a little bit more and just start with the very first lesson of faith that everybody needs to recognize and everybody needs to know, and it's this. You and I, as faith people, as faith children of God, you and I need to know how faith comes. Because when you know how faith comes, now you're in a position to be able to receive faith. You see, God does not want his people ignorant. God wants his people knowledgeable. And he wants us filled with his wisdom and revelation knowledge. You see, when you and I first got saved, we didn't really truly understand this. But thank God it worked, even though we didn't understand it. And how many of you know that today we're enjoying a lot of things that we don't truly fully understand but if we just know some of the basics, it can work for us. Take for example, your automobile today. How many of you know how many pistons are in your car this morning? Some of you have four. Some of you have six. Some of you have eight. And there may be a few of us in here that have 12. 
Glory to God. And when you have 12 pistons in your car, you're talking about a whole different vehicle altogether. Glory to God. Hallelujah. But the truth is, you don't even have to know about mechanics to enjoy your car. No matter what size your car may be. And I want you to know that you and I even got saved without even understanding the importance of faith. But God doesn't want us to be ignorant. He wants us to know about faith. He wants us to understand faith. And he wants us to use the faith that he's given to us. And he wants us to know that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. That's why the most important book you will ever own in your life, hopefully today, is in your hands. How many of you brought your Bible with you this morning? If you did, let's hold it up. Hallelujah. Let's just glorify God with it. And just say, Father, thank you for your holy written word. Thank you for your book of life that I hold in my hands. Thank you for teaching me everything I need to know in your book. Thank you for the Holy Bible. It is holy to me and I will treat it with great reverence and respect knowing that this is you speaking to me. I will treat this written word as if the living word, Jesus Christ, were in my presence in the flesh. I will treat this word like I would treat Jesus if he were here in the natural with me now. I'm so glad, Lord, that you are with me as a born again believer. And I thank you for revealing yourself to me through your word in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. amen. Praise God. Well, I'm glad you brought your Bibles today. It is the most important book you will ever, ever own. Thank God for all the other books that are available to us and all the different fields that we might be, you know, uh, might make a living in or whatever it might be. But let me tell you something. This is the book of books. And today, God wants me to talk to you about faith. Because you know, when we understand faith, we're on our way to live a life that pleases him. And that's actually why he gives us faith. The Bible says in Hebrews eleven six, 6, and I'd like you to turn there if you would, Hebrews eleven six, 6. That without faith, it is impossible to to please him. And it goes on to say, for he, now listen to this, because this is gonna minister to us this morning. This is really going to help us this morning. For he that cometh to God. You see, faith comes to God. For he that cometh to God, but here's what faith does, must believe. Say, I must. I must. I must. I must, I must believe. I must believe. He, is. he is. Today we sung about in, a, in some of our songs that he is. Today I, I heard the Holy Ghost say, he is. He is. He is. Folks, he is here right now. God is with us. God is in us. God is for us. And God is upon us by his spirit. 
And so that means wherever you go, as a born again believer, God goes. And we must represent him well. We must remember who we are. That we are new creatures in Christ. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. And that we are now ambassadors for him. Folks, you and I have special rights today that we may or may not be taking advantage of. They are the rights of an ambassador. You are protected. You are cared for. You, re you represent the kingdom of God. And the kingdom of God will back you up wherever you go. God said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. That you may boldly say, the Lord is my helper. See, you must believe that God is your helper today. And if you'll believe that and believe that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him, he will help you. In fact, he's been helping you even when you and I maybe didn't even know he was helping us. He was helping us because he's our helper. But we also have to recognize him and acknowledge him and revere him and respond to him. The Lord is your helper. So look inside for your help because that is where he lives. He will give you the answers you need. He will give you the, he, he, he will give you the, 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 the solutions to the problems. He'll give you the answers to the questions. He's here to help us. Let's go back to Hebrews eleven six for a moment. Wait a minute, better finish that thought. God said, I will never leave you nor forsake you that you may boldly say, the Lord is my helper and I will not fear what man shall do unto me. Man will do a lot of things to you, but you don't have to fear them. Fear is actually a choice. Fear is actually a spirit. It comes from the devil, doesn't come from God, but you can either choose to fear or not to fear. But what will keep you from fearing? The word of God, the knowledge of the truth, because Jesus said, if you continue in my word and you know the truth, the truth will make you free. From what? Fear, glory to God. God goes on to say that he is love. And he says that perfect love casts out fear. So God is in you. What's he doing? Casting out fear. What's love doing? Casting out fear. When you walk in love, fear is being cast out of your life in the name of Jesus. But let me go back to Hebrews just for a moment. Because you see, in that scripture, he didn't say for me to say it for you or for you to say it for me. He said, I will never leave you nor forsake you that you may boldly say or we may boldly say. So here's a confession that we're supposed to say. Amen. You know, God, who is our Father and our Lord and our Savior and our healer and our baptizer and our refuge and our fortress and our God through Jesus Christ, God loves us so much that he even tells us what to say, hallelujah. In other words, he gives us the answer to the test. Woo, glory to God. 
How many students want to know the answers to their test today? That are, yeah, look at all those students that are in school. They want to know the answers to the test. Well, I'll tell you what, the answers to our life and to the test that we may fa face in this life are found in the Bible. And the answer to the faith question is this. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Do you want your faith to increase today? Increase your hearing. Do you want your faith to increase today? Increase your speaking. Because what you speak, you will hear. And when you speak the word of God, you will hear God. And God gives us faith. Hallelujah. It is a gift from him. And he gave it to us the very day we got born again. He gave to everybody in this room who gave their heart to Jesus Christ the measure of faith. In fact, let's turn there. Hold your place in Hebrews 11. And I want you to go to Romans chapter 12 just for a moment. And I want you to look at this scripture. Because today I want to stir you up in the faith walk, stir you up in the faith realm. And I want to help people who didn't, don't know, or perhaps you've all, you know this, but you need to hear it again. I need to hear this again. We all need to hear this again. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Faith, my brothers and sisters, is present tense. And God wants our faith in him to grow and increase and the way it's gonna go and the way it's gonna grow is by hearing the word of God. Romans, you're there, I'm not. Let me get there real quick. Chapter 12, verse three. Here's the Apostle Paul speaking to the Christians, to the church. He said, for I say through the grace given unto me to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly. Now listen, here's the part I wanted to read to you. According as God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. Now the truth is that this word isn't for every man in the world yet. But it is for every man or woman or boy and girl who is a Christian. But God has provided the way that every person on the face of the earth can have faith in him. There's a lot of people today that don't have faith in God. They don't. Because they either haven't been born again or perhaps, no, I'm just gonna stop there, because they haven't been born again. Do you remember the day maybe when you didn't have any faith in God? If I were to do a flashback, when I was a child, I didn't have any faith in God. I may have known that God existed I even went to church with my parents for, on Christmas and Easter. <laughs> like most of you might have. But I didn't have any faith in him. I may have believed mentally that he existed. But do you, do you know that there's a great substitute even in the church world for faith? And it's called mental assent. We mentally say, yes, God exists. But do we really believe that he exists? Hallelujah. Well, you do after you get saved, that's for sure. Hallelujah. And you do before you get saved. Because you see, the moment that we got saved. And the reason we got saved is because he gave us faith to be saved. And that's where I want to head this morning.
I wanna talk to you about faith for salvation because maybe there's some people in this room that need to be saved or faith for healing or even faith to receive the baptism with the Holy Spirit. It takes faith, my brothers and sisters, to please God and it takes faith to walk with God and it takes faith to receive from God. And so, in Romans chapter 12, these words, when we read these words, according as God has dealt to every man the measure of faith, what men was he actually talking about? The answer is actually in the beginning of the verse. And it reads this. For I say, through the grace given unto me, to every man that is what? Among you. The book of Romans, in other words, is what I'm trying to say here. The book of Romans wasn't written to the sinner. The book of Romans was written to the believers. Now, when a sinner gets saved, he can believe the book of Romans. Hallelujah. Just like you and I got saved, and now we believe the book of Romans. But before we got saved, we probably didn't believe much of anything. Hallelujah. In fact, we may not even have known it, but we were actually walking dead people. We were dead in our trespasses, the Bible says. We were dead in our sins. But God. Turn with me to the book of Ephesians real fast. Ephesians chapter two. Now remember, the book of Romans, Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, Thessalonians, Timothy, all these books from, from Romans to Revelation are actually letters written to the church. They weren't written to the world. They weren't written for the world in the sense that the world's not gonna understand it. You're not gonna truly know who you are in Christ until you are in Christ. That's why Jesus said, you must be born again in order to see the kingdom of God. God wants you to see his kingdom today. And if you're not born again, then today, open your heart and receive the new birth through Jesus Christ, your Lord, our Lord. Jesus is Lord over all. But have you received him yet? You must receive him. John said, but as many as received him, to them gave he the power to become the sons of God. We become a son of God or a child of God when we receive Jesus as our Lord and Savior. And in the book of Ephesians, we, read, we find out something about ourselves before we were saved. And it goes on to say in Ephesians chapter two, and you hath he quickened. Now look at this, now look at, look, this is a past tense, past tense uh, sentence here, but he, he's giving us insight to what we were before we were born again. And you hath he quickened or made alive. The word quickened means made alive. Who were dead in trespasses and sins. Oh, wait a minute. I've been walking on this earth for years. How could I have been dead? You were dead in trespasses and sins. You were dead spiritually until Jesus Christ came into your heart. And when he did, you became alive again unto God, your creator, who is now your heavenly father. And God wants everyone in this room, everyone in this room to have a relationship with their heavenly father. The God of our Lord Jesus Christ and the father of glory 
But let me just read just a little bit more here. Wherein in time past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now works in the children of disobedience. Now maybe you might understand what's going on in the world. The children of Satan are actually called the children of disobedience. And that's, that's the spirit that works in them now. That's the spirit that worked in us before we accepted Christ. We were disobedient people, folks. But now, because of him, we are obedient in him. Oh, we might have been obedient in the natural. I'm talking about obedient to God. You see, I grew up in a home where I was, I was taught obedience. There is natural obedience. But natural obedience won't get you to heaven. Natural obedience only means you're going to be natural in this life. But you might not make the next life. Hallelujah. Because the only way you make the next life is with Jesus Christ. Wherein in time past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air. Who's that? The devil. The spirit that now works in the children of disobedience, among whom also we all had our conversation. See, Paul's talking to the Christians right now. He's talking to believers. He's trying to give us some insight into who we were and what we were, but what we are now. Hallelujah. Among whom also we all had our conversation in times past in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature. See, that's what we actually were by nature. And were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. But I, got, I said all that to get to this part. But God... The Bible says in Hebrews eleven six, 6, but without faith, it is impossible to what? Please him. For he that comes to God must what? Believe that he is. But he didn't stop there. And he went on to say, and, and that he is a rewarder of them who diligently seek him. God's about ready to reward you with some revelation knowledge right now. Are you ready? But God, woo, but God. Yeah, as Brother Coppola said, I preached myself happy. Glory to God. But God, oh, just let's say that a few times. But God, but God, but God. Oh, had it not been for God, church, where would we be? Oh, if it had not been for God, if it had not been for God. But God, listen to this now. Remember, you must believe that he is, and God's going to show you something that he is, who is rich in mercy. Our God is rich in mercy. But God, who is rich in mercy for his great love. This is, you know why he's so merciful? Because of his great love. Wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ. By grace are ye saved. But now let me keep reading. And hath raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ. Today, you and I are in heavenly places in Christ. And you know what's happening right now as you're hearing this word? Faith is coming to your heart. You're believing this. You're believing something new, perhaps, something you never heard before. Or perhaps your faith is just growing and you're realizing, yeah, that's where I am, in heavenly places in Christ. Far above all principality and power and might and dominion. So he goes on to say, even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ, by grace you are saved. Let's make that confession together. By grace I am saved. Let's make it, a, make it, let's in, make it all inclusive. Say, by grace, by grace we, are saved. we are saved. 
and hath raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. And now listen very closely to what I'm about to read. For by grace are you saved through faith. Through faith. You see, church, faith is very important. And the Bible says, and that not of yourselves. See, it's not your faith. It's not your grace. It's not your salvation. It's his grace. It's his salvation. And it's his faith. And it's a gift. For by grace shall you say through faith and not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. Say grace, grace. is a gift. Salvation, Salvation is a gift, is a gift. And, faith and faith is a gift, is a gift. and faith, faith comes, comes by, hearing. by hearing. That's why I have to hear the word of God. Verse nine, not of works. See, our grace, this grace that you and I have experienced this, and, the, and the salvation that we've experienced, it's not based on our works. It's based on his grace. It's based on faith. Not of works, lest any man should boast. And then verse 10. For we are his workmanship. Say, I am his workmanship. Created in Christ Jesus. Yeah, I'd like you to repeat this after me if you would. Let's start again. For we are his workmanship. Created in Christ Jesus. To good works. Which God hath before ordained. That we should walk in them. Today, I want you to know, church, that if you are a believer, you are his workmanship. You have been created in Christ Jesus to good works, which God hath, past tense, before ordained or prepared that we should walk in them. So let me just say this in closing today, that if you want your faith to grow, if you want your faith to grow, you've got to hear God's word. And then you have to act on it. You have to act on what you hear. You have to act on what the word of God is telling you today. Because you see, faith is always present tense and we're going to learn more about faith as we go on but today I want to just plant in your heart the Bible says that, Apollo, that Paul planted Apollos watered but God gave the increase and today I want to plant this word in your heart Romans ten seventeen. Romans 10, 17. You can turn there if you like. You may write it down if you like. But most of all, I want you to hear before we go home today what this scripture is saying. So then, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. People, people say, I don't have any faith today. Well, then get saved. Because people who are saved have faith. Paul said, what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. That if you, 
shall confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. For with the heart, man believes to righteousness and with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. Folks, did you know that you can have faith to be saved? And if we truly understood what that word saved means, it means a lot more than just the new birth. It actually implies deliverance, healing, preservation, soundness, wholeness. But did you know that you also have to have faith to be healed and faith to give your finances and faith to please God? And so today, I just wanna say, if there's anybody in this room who's never yet been saved, today is your day because the Bible says today is the day of salvation. And faith to be saved comes by hearing the word. And the word is nigh thee today. It's actually in your own mouth and it's actually in your own heart that is the word of faith which I preach and which we preach. That if you shall confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and you shall believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you shall be saved so with heads bowed and eyes closed and no one looking around if you're here today and you would say pastor Stan that's me I need to be saved I need to give my life to Jesus Christ if I'm talking to you if I'm talking to you right now to make Jesus the Lord of your life and have a no-so salvation. To know that you belong to him. To know that you're on your way to heaven. To know that he has saved you. Then I want you to open your heart to him right now and receive him as your Lord and Savior. You, you see, there's some people who believe that God exists but even that in itself doesn't save you. What saves you is when you make Jesus the Lord of your life. So if you're here today and you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life, but you wanna to respond to this invitation, would you raise your hand? Anyone in this room that would say, Pastor, I wanna make Jesus the Lord of my life. I wanna receive the free gift of eternal life through Jesus Christ, my Lord. I see no hands in this audience this morning, right now? Does that mean I'm speaking to a room full of believers? Would every believer in this room please raise their hand? And if you're not raising your hand, there may be a reason. And so I wanna ask, if again, if you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life, then make him the Lord of life. Or if you're a believer, but you've walked away from him, he wants to restore your relationship and fellowship with him. And if you've been a prodigal son or daughter and you've been out doing your own thing and you, ha and, and you said, and you could actually say, I once knew what it meant to, to, to serve the Lord, but I haven't, been, I haven't been following him. I've been doing my own thing. If I'm speaking to you, he wants you to come on home. And then finally, the third invitation. He wants to fill believers in this room with the Holy Ghost. And if you're a believer and you've never been filled with the Holy Ghost, with the evidence of speaking in other tongues, he wants to fill you with the gift of the Holy Ghost. So with heads bowed and eyes closed just for a moment, if you could say, Pastor, I need to respond to one of those three invitations, either to be born again, either come back to the Lord and rededicate my life to him, or I need to be filled with the Holy Ghost. And you would like to respond today. 
I want to pray with you up here. I want to add my faith to your faith. And we as a congregation want to add our faith to your faith. So I'm going to open the altar right now. And I'm going to say, if you need to be up here, if you should have raised your hand, could have raised your hand, or would have raised your hand, then come on up right now. Come on up. Anybody? Anybody to rededicate their life? Thank you for coming, ma'am. Let's give her a great big hand, everybody. Thank you for coming, ma'am. Thank you for coming. Thank you for coming, anyone. Everyone who needs the Holy Ghost. I'm telling you, the Holy Ghost is here. He's on the earth. He's waiting to be received by Christians. He's not mad at anybody in this room. And if you've been a backslider, he doesn't want you to backslide anymore. He wants you to come forward. So come forward, come forward, come forward in the name of Jesus. Come forward, come forward, come forward in the name of Jesus. Let's give them a great big hand as they come, everybody. Let's cheer them on because they're being cheered on right now from heaven. They're being cheered on right now by that great cloud of witnesses. They're saying you're making the right decision. You're making the right decision. Heaven's shouting right now as people rejoice. As heaven's shouting as people repent, as people make changes in their life for the glory of God. I'm a little excited right now. I hope you don't mind. <laughs> I love you and I care about you. Come. There's, yeah, that's right. I'm telling you. Glory, glory, glory. Come, come, come. Come to receive. Come to receive the free gift of eternal life. Come to receive forgiveness that belongs to you this morning. Come to receive the Holy Ghost. Come to receive the Holy Ghost this morning. Praise God. You are precious. That's fine. Every one of you are precious and thank you for responding. God knew you would be here and we would be here. And we love you and we bless you. And God has a plan for you and a purpose for you. And the devil is not going to destroy you in the name of Jesus. I want to just say that out loud so he knows in the name of Jesus. Congregation, stretch forth your hands. Heaven's rejoicing this morning. Heaven is for real. Heaven is more real. Heaven is for real. But God also wants us to have heaven on earth. And he wants you to have a real life experience with him for the rest of your life. Lord, I thank you for your mercy and grace for everyone who has come. You know their spiritual needs. We stretch forth our hands in faith. We surround them with faith and love now. And we pray that they receive either Jesus as Lord or rededicate their lives to you. And we pray that they all receive the gift of the Holy Ghost by faith, through faith, in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. We love you. We want you to go to that, with that gentleman right there to that place of prayer. Let's give, if you need to get your personal belongings, get your personal belongings. And if there's anybody else that says, you know, Pastor, I wished I had gotten in that line, then you get out right now and you just follow them right out. Follow Pastor Marcus to the prayer room. Follow Pastor Marcus to the prayer room this morning. All right, church. Are you happy about faith? Are you going to study faith? Yes. Are you going to hear the word of God? Yes. Say with me before we go, Lord, I love you. And I thank you for having saved us. And we thank you, Lord, for having saved, healed, and delivered, and filled those who came to the altar today in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. So hear the word this week and watch your faith grow. God bless you. The altar is open. You may come and worship the Lord and bring a gift. And remember, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God.